Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is a case of Bruce versus Miller. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Hey. Ms. Bruce, you say your ex-boyfriend was supportive during your pregnancy and never had any doubt about paternity. It wasn't until your now 17-month-old daughter, Nevaeh, was born that he started to deny that he was her father and now does nothing for her. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Miller, you claim the plaintiff slept with your friend and you know that he is Nevaeh's father because you believe it is medically impossible for you to father children. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Bruce, you say he needs to step up. That's right. What does he do for your daughter? Nothing. He hasn't done anything for my daughter all this year. Yeah, I mean, I've been there the whole time that she was pregnant and, you know, but this year, she's correct. I haven't done much because nothing. of the He's situation being the way that it is between her and I. That has you nothing know, to do with our the daughter. Paternity of the she child. still needs food. She still needs to... Uh, she still needs daycare. And you still, she still need to prove everything. that she mine. And so you've pretty much been doing this on your own. Right. Right. So take me back. I want to understand the nature of your relationship, how you all met, got together... I met him years ago um, at a party. We talked for a minute. I wasn't really interested. We didn't really talk much for a few years. And then he contacted me on Facebook in January of 2012. And we've been talking ever since then. Talking? What's that mean? Well, you've been doing we more than to talking date. if Nevaeh is here. Right. And <laughs> right. he could potentially it moved, be it the moved father. quickly. He moved in. And then we started to, you know. So wait, how him. quickly after you met did he move in? Very soon, like a month. So, a month after you... No, this is... That's, let me stop her right there. I met her technically, like, 10 years ago. Right. So, it's like we were already familiar with each other. Right. So, the process just went faster because of that. And is it a committed relationship? Are you boyfriend and girlfriend? It was never committed, apparently. Ever. Ever. It was never a monogamous relationship. On I found side? out very There's early on... On both sides? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, I found out right. very early on that he had been doing things... Outside of our relationship. That's a true statement. Yeah, that's true. Things happened between us and we broke up, so there was no more commitment. But we continued to deal with each other on other levels. Right. But the relationship... Deal with each other on other levels. Just go yeah, on and tell the story. Six. Okay, so you still having continue sex, to have hanging sex. out, still living acting like together. we're in a relationship. We were living together. We had lived... We were on and off throughout the last five years. It was never on the whole five years. Let me say that. Right. But you were on and off at some point. Right. You right. found out you're pregnant. Right. So, when you got pregnant, was this during a time you were together and committed no. or broken up? We were broken up. We were broken up, but we were still sleeping <laughs> together. So, you find out you're pregnant. Mm-hmm. When you find out you're pregnant, take me to that day. What happens? Him and I both... We both went up to a drugstore. We both got a test. We both came back to my house... I took it, called him in there. He saw it was positive. We got along fine throughout my pregnancy all the way up until the eighth month. So, wait, was he happy? Yes. Well, she was broke... We was broken up. She was with... Who Who knows? That's... Just because the test come back that she's positive pregnant don't mean I'm positive the father. Right, and we... You know? We discussed... True. And we discussed getting a DNA test, and I was okay with that because we hadn't been together. I was okay with getting the DNA test. Oh, so immediately there was a discussion of a DNA right. test. Yeah, no, it was so fine. So immediately you expressed that you may or may yeah, not I... be the father of this right. child. Going into her te- going into her pregnancy, she wasn't even four, maybe five months pregnant before I was like, hey, we're gonna have to get a um, DNA test done. Because, but did you, you know, say you thought that she wasn't yours for that reason? I ain't gonna never, ever rule out the possibility that she's mine. Because I know that I was having sex with you unprotected. So, the possibility is there. So, why the disgust, Ms. Bruce? Because if I listen to Mr. Miller's testimony, he's basically saying she got pregnant during a time where we weren't committed. So, while I know I could potentially be the father, I don't know if there could potentially be another father. Right. I don't disagree with you that he had a reason to want a DNA test. It's just the way that he asked me for it after our child got here. He said, she just don't look like me. I need a blood test, is what he said. Okay, but you oh, was already Oh, so you're going. saying... So, I understood had I was... If I was in his position and I was the man and he was the woman, I would want a DNA test as well because you never know what someone's doing behind your back. So, I understood the fact that... He wanted so, to test. So, well, you have the opportunity. We're in court now, so you have the opportunity to testify. Were you doing something else with someone else? No. But you believe she slept with your friend. Right. Yes, that's what I believe. And it's like, during her pregnancy, he started to just kind of pull away from, you know, from me. I'm not thinking much of it, you know, but it was when she had the baby 
that things really came to light as far as the friend is concerned because the day that she gave, well, the day that, yeah, she went into labor, she had a C-section. And I'm up there to the hospital when the child is born. One of my friends gladly welcomes the child like a friend would welcome his friend's child. Like, hey, let me hold the baby. The one that's been distant, that's exactly how he was in the hospital that day. He don't want to hold the baby, but I noticed how he looked at the child. Really? When he came into the room, it was one of those looks like he wanted to see the baby, <laughs> but not be dealt with the baby. He oh! is delusional. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Your friend of 30 years, this is right. a person you know very well, right. was acting uncharacteristically different. Right. When the child was born, the friend, he gave me a gift with some onesies in it. One of the onesies specifically said, my daddy is the blank. Okay, I won't say the name because the name that was on the onesie is a nickname that the friend goes by. What? I have that right here. Thank you. So you say this friend who started acting funny brings you two onesies for the baby? Mm hmm That's And it has exactly. the other guy's name. It said his nickname, not his real name, but I'm his friend. I know what you go by, of course. She knew what it was, and she hurry up and put it back He's in the box. He's lying. I ain't, seen, I ain't never seen he the baby wear He is lying. Specially. So did you get a onesie that had his friend's nickname no. on it? No. No. So one of you all... Why are you all lying? He's because lying. it okay, can't lying. be. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Are you still in touch with that friend? No. You confronted him about this yeah. paternity oh, issue? Oh, yeah, I confronted him about this situation. Well, a matter of fact, he actually reached out to me, called my phone, and he's like, as soon as I got the phone, hello? He's like, hey, what's all this about? You think Kelly, uh, baby is my baby? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I think. Do you have any other reasons why you feel like this friend could potentially be yes, this Bruce's... I mean, I have also, since the baby's been here, I have had people call me and say, we seen your baby mom call in his neighborhood. So in his All right, hold on. So you submitted an exhibit to the court... All right. ...to explain... Yes. ...this situation. All right, I'd like to uh, see this exhibit. Okay. This is the neighborhood that he lives in. Out there, it's a residential neighborhood. Ain't no stores out there, no clubs, no place but somebody's house. Okay? So you're saying this, her car was spotted in this neighborhood. Right. Not once, twice, somebody done but called me. But did you me. see my car? Did you see it? No, I, I okay. never said that okay. I saw her car. I right. said someone has reached out to me so and said that they seen my baby mama car oh, okay. in this man's neighborhood. So, so you I, think she's in this neighborhood because she's taking the baby to see... That's what I originally was thinking. Your friend? Right. So, Ms. Bruce, you're saying that this story is fabricated. Completely fabricated. Why would multiple people say they saw your car. No one said that. Mr. Miller has but said no, that. No, somebody himself. said that. Nobody now, has you, said that. How you know? How you know ain't nobody said nobody that? Nobody has, because I know him. How you nobody know? has said that. I know that. you. You one of the biggest liars nobody in the Nobody said city. that. Hold on. Let, let's be respect. Right. I didn't have any... Me and him So you no deny that. all of this? Yes. Yeah, of all right. I'm not going to admit to anything that I haven't so done. So when the vet was you born... Know, no, you did. And Mr. Miller was there for the birth? He was there for the birth and because I asked him to be because a month prior to that, he was in my A. He left my house when I was eight months pregnant and he went and got his own place and claimed it was for his daughter, but she never once went to that house, ever. Oh, why she ain't and go then when I Why tried, she ain't been there? Then when I why tried she ain't to been establish paternity... Why my daughter ain't come to my house? Excuse me. Tell the when I why tried daughter to ain't establish... Is it your daughter? I signed the birth certificate, so technically it is my daughter. It is. Okay. Okay, so, now... She has his last we name. We are testifying. This right. is your daughter under the law. Right. You are the legal father. Right. We do not know if you're the biological father, right. but you are the legal father. Oh, this if, in fact, it is determined today that he is not the biological father, mm -hmm. then he can go back to your home state and petition the court to have his name removed. I'm aware of that. Yes, I'm confident. I don't have anything to worry about. And I also have um, a picture that I wanted to show you since he... You have brought evidence? Yes. A photo? Yes. Jerome, will you please hand me that photo, please? John has said that he was so doubtful for so long, you know, that's just a picture after my child was born. All right. Of him and her. So this is a picture of you. Right. And it's the and picture of beautiful Nevaeh. I just think it's odd that someone that's really that 
sure See, that he's not... See, that's the whole thing. What's odd is that I'm a man who was dealing with a woman and she got pregnant and me being the type of man I am, knowing that I'm even a mere possibility, I don't know who you've been sleeping with, but just the fact that I'm a possibility, I'll be the one to step up. That's the that's funny my, my, part. You're gonna step up and no, take a picture? Well, no, thank you. I stepped I up. Well, I mean, if you but look at, hold on, now. Right. hold on. I'm not doing nothing now. I, I gotta figure this out. I can't continue, because I ain't going 18 years. <laughs> but I, hey, you take a breath. It. Okay. <laughs> take Stop. a breath. I, I just No, like... take a breath. The look on your face, Mr. Miller. <laughs> the look on your face to me says doubt. Right. So that lets you know how long it's been present in me. You said in your court file you don't even think it's medically possible for you to have children. Right. I'll... Explain that to the court. This child was conceived when I was 35 years old. But you old. signed a birth certificate. Right. I, I, never <laughs> okay. had, I never had any children prior to this, and I, I'm a pretty a real sexual active guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I never had any kids, so when she mm -hmm. got pregnant, I just was kind of wanting, like, dang, I didn't even know, you know. And so you believe what you have a low sperm count? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I believe my sperm count is low, and I don't believe that I can father a child. When we get to this courtroom, we're about answers. Thank yes, ma'am. And so we ordered you to undergo a semen analysis, and we have those results. Mm -hmm. Jerome, can you please escort Dr. Jamila Gator into the courtroom? Hello, Dr. Gator. Hi. Right up to the witness stand. Thank Hi, Dr. Gator. Hi. Thank you so much for being here with us. We are here discussing the paternity of beautiful baby Nevea. Mr. Miller has indicated through his testimony he believes he has a low semen count. So can you explain Mr. Miller's results specifically? Yes. So in Mr. Miller's case, his total volume of sperm in the actual um, analysis was quite low. His actual total sperm count was also borderline low at 19 million. So normal is closer to 40 million. His motility was actually very low. Normally males, 50% of their sperm are motile, which increases the chance of pregnancy because the sperm has to swim to the egg to basically fertilize it. So in Mr. Miller's case, only 24% of the sperm were motile which is very low. What is the chance that he would be able to father a child? Because here we, of course, are talking about paternity. So it's possible still for Mr. Miller to father a child with a low sperm count, but the likelihood goes down significantly with a sperm count that low. Very interesting. So when you hear that, Mr. Miller, does that in any way affect your belief as you came into this courtroom, what you feel about Nevaeh? You know, and um, hearing this just confirms that thought that I had. You know, I don't want her to just, oh, that's your baby, oh, that's your baby, that's your baby, that's your baby, that's your baby. Like it was just me, 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 me that you was dealing with, like you're claiming. All right, so Ms. Bruce, has your position changed? Nope, it looks like he's clear from here on out. He shouldn't have any more kids, but he's got mine. Well, we'll see. They were swimming fine then. Okay. Well, that's all that matter, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. We'll find out how well but they were swimming. The, at all the right. end of the day, I just want him to be in her life. I want him to be a father to my daughter. She deserves that. Those are your hopes. Those are my hopes. I just want him to get past some of the anger that he has towards me in order to stop hindering the relationship with her once he finds out that she is his. Well, let's get to the truth. Let's do that. So we can see where we go from here. Okay. Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Bruce versus Miller, when it comes to 17-month-old Nevaeh Miller, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Miller, you are the father. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you are the father. That's, that's perfect for me. That's your gorgeous little girl. I really appreciate it, and I apologize to her for the way that I have handled <laughs> the situation throughout this whole year and throughout the... Just step baby. up and be my baby's daddy. That's all I want you to my do. Baby. That's it. So when you look at your little girl now, I see you feel emotional. Why do you feel that? Because I 
have allowed so many different influences to keep me from me. Mm, well said, because when you make a child, it is a part of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is way heavy on me. So it's great to find out the truth once and for all and be able to do what needs to be done. And I see your emotion, Ms. Bruce, because I know this has been a long road. <laughs> you understand that much of this is a symptom of your toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. Both of you are more than intelligent enough to have solved this DNA situation months ago. I see you can't even keep your eyes off of her, Mr. Miller. That's my babe. She's been waiting on you. Yeah, I know. Every little girl wants her daddy. Yes. We have counseling and resources for you. I want you to talk to Dr. Jeff about how to do this. Co-parenting is not easy, but you can do it. Nevaeh is worth it. Mm -hmm. Right. I wish you all the very best. Thank Court you. is adjourned. Thank you.